Hello, I'm Susan Miller, and welcome to Alana Zabel's retreat. I'm going to be talking about astrology, and I have two lectures. So let me tell you about the first one, which will begin now. The first one's about the grand mutation. It's the meeting of Jupiter and Saturn for the first time in 20 years on December 21st. Now, if you're saying, well, wait a minute, nothing happened on that day. Why didn't it? <laughs> because that was the threshold, the day in which you walk through the portal to a new experience. Whenever Jupiter and Saturn meet, they color all of society, the music, the art, the literature, the fashion, the food, even the way we work and the way we approach our work. Politics and government are also highly sensitive to the place Jupiter and Saturn meet. Now, what's interesting is that for the past 200 years, almost, almost 200 years, they've always met in Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, always giving the next sign their due, never jumping ahead. <laughs> and so this year, the reason we call it the grand mutation is that Jupiter and Saturn are meeting in an earth sign. Now for your whole time of being alive, you've never experienced this. And this is going to change society in a big way as we move forward. You've already started to feel a bit of it. And I will show you how the pandemic is speeding up our assimilation of what the universe is trying to teach us. It's going to be a really exciting new future, very different from the past. And soon everything that, you know, you know in your normal life, not everything, but some things are going to seem very antiquated and in need of renovation and change. So this is pretty exciting and I explain everything in my lecture. So I want you to be excited you could sit down and sit back and have a cup of tea, or you could be walking and taking a hike and listening. But I've really done a lot of research on this. I know there's a rumor on the internet that the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn was the Christmas star in Bethlehem. That's partially right, but not entirely right. <laughs> it was true that all the astrologers think that Jupiter and Saturn created a great light, but they were aided by Mars, who is also there in conjunction. This year, Mars was far away. He was on another assignment. <laughs> he wasn't anywhere near Aquarius. Uh, he was in Capricorn. So um, not close enough to create the Christmas star. They also believe that that star really happened in March, maybe around the 10th through May 4th or early May. They don't know exactly, but that's some of the conjecture. You can look it up on Google. But if you felt nothing happened, well, that was a portal that you went through. This conjunction is so different and we are so lucky to be living through it because we've only had Earth up until now and we're moving into air. Aquarius is an air sign. I know a lot of people think it's water. It's not. The, the water bearer is pouring knowledge into the ether that surrounds the earth. He's not pouring water. He's not a water sign. <laughs> so anyway, Aquarius is an intellectual air sign. And next would come Gemini in 2040. And after that, 2060, it will be Libra. And then the rotation starts again. Now, this is pretty exciting because all of society will change. What we eat, what we wear, how we work, the tools we use to work, how we get to work. <laughs> if we leave the house, maybe we don't want to anymore. Maybe we like working home. I've always liked working home. I'm always home. <laughs> but uh, you will see as I go through my uh, talk, that you'll get some ideas. And yes, with anything new, just like when we started the internet, laws had to be created to have some guardrails. 
you know, um, you'll, you'll see, I'll talk about that. Some laws have to be put in place to keep things organized. <laughs> but uh, this is a very big change that you've already started to feel because Saturn went into Aquarius for a short time from March 20th to July 1st. So we'll talk about that too. Okay, are you all ready? Sit back, have a cup of tea, and listen to what I have to say, but make your list of questions because I think you're gonna have lots. <laughs> and because Alana kept the group small, everybody can ask as many questions as they like. You won't go home without having your question answered. Well, of course you are home, <laughs> but I mean, you won't leave without having your question answered. Okay, so let's begin. Hello, this is Susan Miller, and I have the greatest lecture for you today. Something's going on in 2021 that you should be aware of because it only happens every 20 years. What's happening is Saturn will not be getting along with Uranus. They're at odds, 90 degrees, and that's like the square end of a table. And I shouldn't really say they're not getting along, they're having a debate. And 2021 will be very colored by this aspect because it starts um, actually the minute the year begins. These are very slow moving planets. But Uranus likes to tear everything down and make new and innovate. Saturn is just the opposite. It likes to preserve things like landmark buildings and old documents by George Washington and Lincoln, <laughs> a state jewelry. So you have a clash between the old and the new. But what makes this really interesting is Saturn will be in Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus, <laughs> But Saturn is, at birth, ruled by Capricorn. Capricorn is a conservative sign. It's patriarchal. It's traditional. It's, um, it's ideas come from the top, say the president or king, down to the subjects. Aquarius and Uranus comes from the grassroots up. If Capricorn is conservative, Uranus is progressive. Now you need both in life. I mean, what would we do without beautiful landmark buildings and beautiful brooches from our grandmother <laughs> and old silver <laughs> and all those nice things? How I see this is that after the hurricane and the pandemic has been quite a hurricane for all of us, quite a crisis, we run out on the beach and we see what's still standing and the rebuilding process starts. Now that's not always easy. However, it gives us lots and lots of options. That's a good thing. So when will these two actually meet in exact degree? February 17th, June 14th, and December 23rd, 24th, depending on which time zone you're in. So it goes through the whole year, but you feel it before and after the two have met, because as I said, they move so slowly. Now, some things will be very obvious, and I'm talking about society right now, but you will feel this in your own life, and we'll get to that later. But some things we'll want to preserve, and it's so obvious, we'll all say, yes, we want that. But then there's other things that we definitely want to modernize, and people will be in agreement on that. 
it's the gray area that becomes a little more touchy. But you get to be part of the public discussion. You'll start seeing this play out pretty soon. You will. Now, Uranus is the slower moving planet. And they say the slower moving planet usually wins a few more points. <laughs> but, you know, in truth, um, you're going to be going back and forth and deciding what in your life do you want to keep and what do you want to innovate and change? You know, we've all been in the house. The whole world's been in the house. <laughs> I talk to my editors all over the world. We're all doing the exact same thing. And, and it's, it can get a little stir crazy being home so much, but I've been extremely productive and I'm sure you have too. And starting new things is very healthy when you're locked in the house. And, you know, I wrote an app <laughs> and I placed it on the Apple App Store on August 28th. And I did it all through the pandemic over Zoom. I picked the company in Santa Monica that I wanted to work with. I live in New York. And it you know, I, I'm touchy-feely. I like to be there, but, you know, what are you going to do? So that's something I wanted to innovate. I had an app. I felt I could make it better. And I was willing to invest in, in the time and effort for the engineers. And I also wrote my calendar. And now I'm working on another app, but it's totally secret, so I can't tell you about that yet. But I urge you to try something new. Now, Saturn is going to be in Aquarius. But to ease the entry, Jupiter's coming with Saturn, and Jupiter's the giver of gifts and luck. And Uranus is in Taurus, a very early degree, I think it's around 10 degrees. So I'm going to go through the zodiac, and I'll show you where this push-pull is going to wind up in your life. But as our governor, Governor Cuomo, said to us in New York, you're home, and you don't have to go back to your old life if you don't want to. You're being given a sterling opportunity to think about what you'd like to do and what you'd like to contribute to the world. It's, it's a hard question. I know it is. I went through it. I remember saying to my mother and father when they were having dinner, I had already eaten, I said, what if I never find my place in life? My father looks up from stabbing his steak <laughs> and, and his mashed potatoes, and he looks at me as if I'm crazy, and he says, of course you're going to find your niche in life. And my mother's, you know, nodding her head. I said, well, how can you be so sure? He said, everybody goes through that. You will definitely find your right niche. I said, what if I'm, what if I'm the, the exception to the rule? He said, you won't be. You're a member of our family. Our family does not fall through the cracks. Our family is intelligent, and we think things through, and you will, and you're going to be successful. Well, I loved my parents' confidence in me, but I had no idea why they were feeling this way. And you know what? They were right. I did find my niche, and I'm super happy. But it takes a little trial and error. So if you're young and you're still in that process, say if you're in your 20s, the 20s is the area of life when you get to know yourself and you get to know your talents. Believe me, I never wanted the world to know I knew astrology. But I thought that little story would inspire you. Anyway, if you're in Aries, you have Uranus in the house of friendship and uh great wishes and dreams. And Saturn, actually, no, 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 no. It's in your house. of Saturn's in Aquarius. So Saturn is in your house of hopes and wishes and friendship. And Uranus is in, um, Saturn's in your house of money. And that means it's going to be hard to get a raise. You know, they're going to have a wage freeze. But there could be somebody near you that 
inspires you to do some charity work because Uranus is very connected to charity, humanitarian work, uh, community work. And I feel next year, the government's not going to have any money. They have already did as much deficit spending as they can afford. And we're going to have to pay all that back, according to the head of the Fed that made an appearance on 60 Minutes. I'm glad someone's telling us the truth. So if the government can't help people, it'll fall to us. Now, some of us don't have the money to help people. So maybe we can roll up our sleeves and and help in a coat drive or help in a, a food bank. Or you can find out someone right under your nose is suffering and you never knew it. I have a neighbor. I live in a 45-story building. There's a lot of apartments here. And I've lived here a long time, so I know most people. And I saw the man across the way. I know he used to work on Wall Street. So I said, hi, how are you doing? He said, okay. He was carrying a paper bag. And he said, well, I'm really glad that they give out free food or I'd be really hungry. I almost fell on the floor. I was so shocked, but I didn't show it, of course. But that told me that my next door neighbor, who's right across from my door, who I see every day, needs some help. So when I make a beautiful soup, you know, maybe chicken soup with saffron and lots of vegetables and rice on the side, I should make some for him too. And say, you know, I have too much soup. Would you like to take some? Because my freezer can't handle all this Tupperware. <laughs> you know, you, you try to make it so that the person doesn't feel embarrassed to take it. You're just saying, you know, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I made all this soup. And uh, you make it rich and delicious. I make really great soup. I love to cook. I can guarantee someone in your family is suffering and you don't know it. And you may find out by accident, but when you do, you have to help. So anyway, with Aries, you won't, well, actually, with Uranus in your second house, you could get a big raise. It could be pretty spectacular or nothing at all. It, you know, Uranus runs the whole gamut. But Saturn in the 11th house usually means you help a friend in need. And it could be one-on-one, or it could be a group of people like uh, the homeless or battered women or, or the coral reef or, or endangered animals, what, whatever your particular sensitivity is. So that is something that's going to come up in your life probably. And... Uh, Because Uranus is at odds with Saturn, you may not be able to spend as freely until you can see the lay of the land and how much money you have coming in. Because, you know, with with Saturn in the second house, your boss is going to be tight-fisted. He's going to say, well, you know, we have a wage freeze and, you know, and let's say you're offered a job. And they said, well, we can't really give you what you're asking, but it is a great job, so take it and say to them, let's revisit my salary in six months. And, and if you could do that, that would be a good idea. Now, if you're Taurus, oh, you're going to have such a spectacular year for career. Now, you're going to have Jupiter and Saturn and many other planets in your house of honors, awards, achievement, fame. By February, you're like fainting. I'm watching all my Taurus friends because they're all going to have great news to tell me, especially the ones born in April, because those planets are hitting those early degrees of Taurus. Now, Saturn is an Aquarius, so the job that they take on is very responsible. But Taurus is never adverse to hard work. You know, when I started Astrology Zone 25 years ago this year, it was December 14th, 1995, Saturn was on my sun. And they say, oh, that's terrible. Oh, such hard work. You probably won't even keep the site. Well, that's 
crazy. What you do with Saturn, you get to keep forever. <laughs> oh, those naysayers were so wrong. If you love what you're doing, you're going to keep it. But Uranus is making you very um, in the mood for rebellion and freedom. And if anybody tries to hem you in, whether it's uh, a partner in love or a partner in business or a parent who wants you to follow a career path that they chose for you, whatever it is, you're not going to um, follow it. You're going to do your own thing. With Uranus on your son, this only happens once every 84 years. And you've got it now, especially if you're born in April. The people born in May will feel it in the next coming five years. Gradually, it will go through the month of May. But this is pretty exciting because you will discover things about yourself, that uh, talents you could develop. And Uranus, Uranus can make you famous. Keep that in mind. Okay, so if that's on your list, <laughs> work hard and, and go for it. Now, if you're Gemini, well, that's a little bit more complicated because you have Saturn in the 12th house of working alone in solitude. And Uranus is in the house of publishing and broadcasting and uh, all kinds of opportunities and communication. Also legal things. Uh, but it's well aspected for you. Um, well, I mean, there is a push-pull. All right, I let my optimism get away from me. But you'll be working alone a lot on your book, on your research, on your translation, on your podcast, whatever it is, you'll be working a lot in solitude, and that's when you get a lot done. And if you're writing a book, you may have to tweak it or change the table of contents or change something about the character, but that's why we have editors in this world. They help us, and they make us better. They're our little fairy godmothers. <laughs> I love editors. <laughs> So keep that in mind, Gemini. You made money last year. You should have. Last year was a good year to make money. When nobody else was making money, you were the exception. Now, Cancer, you have an interesting forecast because you had difficulty with partners last year, but that's getting better now, much better. You weren't sure if you wanted to stay with the person you're with, you were like the girl with the daisies. I love you. I love you not. I love you. <laughs> you know, it was like going back and forth. But Uranus is in Taurus. That's in your house of friendship and humanitarian efforts, you know, community efforts, charitable efforts. And Saturn is in Aquarius in your house of money. And don't say, oh, gosh, Saturn's going to hold me down. Not this year he's not because Jupiter will be right next to Saturn. It means you'll work hard for the money, and the kind of money you'll make is commissions or royalties, uh, bonus, money that comes in through the side, not through normal earned income. Could be a, a prize winning, you know, you maybe you win a contest, or maybe some, an elderly aunt will leave you an inheritance. Um, there's all kinds of possibilities, but you will make money this year. And with Saturn there, you'll invest it. Because Saturn teaches you not to squander anything. You know, Jupiter's there to keep you optimistic, but Saturn will be there to make you wise and practical with the money that's coming in. Now, Uranus will be in your house of... Um, you know, in Taurus, in, in your house of friendship. So you may want to help a friend, and you may worry about the amount of money you could possibly give this person. So you know, try to be realistic. But I do believe in helping people who are in hard way, and I've done it many times myself. And if you do it, you just have to say to yourself, I don't expect it ever to come back. And you know, and 
the more you help others, the more money comes to you. So don't worry about it. But, you know, try to be realistic. Maybe you could just cook dinner for that person. Maybe a friend is going through a hard time and you, you just you want to lighten the load a little bit. And, or by taking her children. You know, I have my best friend has an autistic child. And when her father went to the hospital uh, with COVID, and they first said, oh, he'll never go on a ventilator. And that night he went on a ventilator. And for 12 days he was on it. And they were telling my friend that he'll never be the same. Her father will be a vegetable. So I made friends with her our autistic little boy who's 13. And every night I would call George. And we would have a nice conversation because I'm sure he was missing his mother and his mother couldn't go to the hospital. But you know how it is when you have somebody you dearly love in the hospital. She had a prayer circle for all the people she knew to help her father uh, every night at nine o'clock. I was part of that. But I made friends with George and it has lasted. He still calls me. I was trying to take some of the pressure off my friend's shoulders. And she lives very far from me. She's up in Connecticut. I'm in Manhattan. So, you know, we're not near at all. But I could do it over the phone. You will find ways to help a friend in need. Now, if you're a Leo, <laughs> this year you're going to find out about the privileges and the difficulties of partnership and marriage. Now, don't say, oh, this sounds terrible. No, 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 no. You know, when you first meet someone, it's all moonlight and, moonlight and magic. <laughs> but then as you go deeper, you find little things that you don't agree on. But that's the fun. And you work it out. And this is the year you're going to go deeper and deeper. Now, Uranus is in Taurus, and that's in your house of career. So there are some surprises in your career. So while all that's going on with a partner, and it could be a partner in business, it doesn't have to be a partner in, um, in marriage. See, uh, in astrology, a partner in marriage and a partner in business is the same thing because you sign a contract, because the house of marriage is a contractual house. So that's why I can't always tell if you're not getting along with your agent, business partner, publicist, <laughs> I don't know who it is. But there is a clash there that if the relationship is strong, you'll find the key to it. If for a long time you've been unhappy, well, Saturn square Uranus will show you that you're basically incompatible and you'll need to, to talk about it. And maybe you aren't right for each other. But I'm the optimist. I feel all marriages have their ups and downs. And something drew you to that person. So let's, let's think of thoughts. It, it could be a business partner. You know, where you're just not on the same page as this person. And you're kind of shocked. <laughs> this person's supposed to be helping you and they're not. Okay, so you just see what that is and expect a lot of surprises, especially in January and February, but especially January in your career. Now, Virgo, you have lots of things going on. Last year, you had good love aspects. So if you met somebody last year, I want you to stay with that person. But this year... You have Saturn in your house of foreign people, foreign places. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you have Uranus up there. And Uranus gives unusual circumstances. Let's say you, let's say you do a lot of import-export, you deal with customs. Well, you could have some glitches, but Taurus gets along really well with Virgo. So they seem to be small problems that melt away. Um, Saturn in Aquarius will give you a heavy workload. I'll be honest. But you know what? Who better than a Virgo to do a lot of work? You do more in a week than most people do in two weeks. So you are Miss Industrious or Mr. Industrious. You wake up every morning and you know what you have to achieve and you go after it and you do it. So... Um, 
Just watch the foreign people, foreign places. Also publishing, broadcasting. Make sure you're following all the rules. Oh, also it rules legal cases. So be sure to copyright your ideas, uh, trademark the name of your app or your website. Um, you need to go through all those legal steps. I quickly learned that when you run a business, your biggest expense is your lawyer and your engineers. <laughs> and the rest is manageable, but those are the big chunk of the pie. <laughs> but it motivates you to work harder and you find the way to pay them. So it's all good. It's all good. So now Libra, Libra, you've won the jackpot because you have Jupiter and Saturn in the house of true love. So you're ready for a real relationship. No more of going out five or six times and then dropping that person. And you're ready for a serious relationship. And actually, you have the best aspects to do it because you have Jupiter there to give you opportunity and you have Saturn there to give you a serious attitude. This is good. Now you have Uranus in the house of money. So I don't want you loaning money to a partner that you just met. <laughs> uh, some partners are looking for a meal ticket and I don't want you to give that person a meal ticket. You know, so make sure the person you get involved with has a good credit rating. Because if you get married, you're going to take on that person's credit rating. So I would look carefully at that because Uranus is not leaving for five years. So in the coming years, if you fall in love, and you get very serious. I think you should say, let's both get our credit ratings and share them. You know, you really need to do that. Nobody told me that when I was 24, when I got married. I wish they had, you know, so. But it would be a great year for you to have a baby. Mm, one of the best. And I think you're ready if you're married and in love. Or even if you're single and want to have a baby on your own. Lots of girls are doing that now. And this is really a good time to do that. Now, um, Scorpio. Scorpio, you may be ready to buy property. You may want to buy a studio or uh, a house <laughs> or a condo <laughs> or a vacation home. And real estate glitters for you. I mean, you have such a good aspect for, for buying property. And it won't come again for 12 years. So, and I really think about this. You also have tremendous family support. So if you need your mother or father to help you with some money, maybe part of the down payment, ask. Even if they've never helped you before. And you're saying, oh, there's no way. No, this year... Exception to the rule. It's also a year where you could fix up your present house. If you love your house and you don't want to move, then you can stay there and make it even more beautiful. You could renovate or have repairs. You could paint the whole, uh, all the rooms. Uh, you can have the painters come in, which I think is a good idea because they know how to do it and they do a nice job, <laughs> especially if you get a recommendation. But, um, you know, you could start a vision board. And it's actually going to be a lot of fun. If you're a Sagittarian, oh, well, I should say one thing. Uh, Uranus is in your house of partner, Scorpio. And Saturn is in Aquarius in your house of home. But that's why I felt when you have Saturn in the house of home, you're ready to do something that seemed hard to do just a few years ago. You know, just think back five, six years. You might have said, oh, no, I am not ready to buy a house. And now you might be. But uh, in terms of Uranus, Uranus is in your house of partner. Now, this could be good or this could be a little hard. Your partner could be the area of greatest surprise and stimulation because wherever you have Uranus, that's where you go for your fun in life and your, you know, lots of surprises. But you want to be sure that you know your partner well before you get involved deeply. Uranus is genius. 
So the person you're in love with may be a genius, the person you married or are about to marry. And by the way, this year, Venus is not retrograde and Mars is not retrograde. So you have the open road to marry. I just would avoid February, June, and October when Mercury's retrograde. And on the front page of my website, go on the computer. It's just easier. It's on my app too, but go on the computer on the lower left-hand side. It says table of Mercury retrograde from now until 2030. So you never have to be in the dark about when Mercury is going to retrograde. Also on my calendar, I tell you Mercury goes retrograde today until such and such a day. So you don't have to be paging through the calendar and trying to figure out when that is. I make it really easy. I read the calendar for myself and I realized I think my readers would love this. <laughs> and they do. And you can see a picture of my calendar on the home page of my website. It's right there, my 25th anniversary calendar. I do them every year. They're collectibles. They're made out of archival paper. It's really gorgeous. I work with Isaac Zanu, my favorite artist. So he just did Estee Lauder's holiday collection. He used to do Henry Bendel's. If you live in New York, you know the skinny girls he used to do for them. So <coughs> uh, if you're a Sag, you have Saturn, uh, you have Saturn in the house of communication. And you have Uranus in the house of, of work, work assignments, not your reputation, but day-to-day -day work assignments. So you're saying to yourself, oh, well, I'm, going, I'm venturing into new territory. Let's say you want to do an app. Well, with Saturn, you have to be prepared for some tweaks. You know, when you go into a new territory, that's when you learn the most. That's why I love going into new technology. But you're going to run up against an obstacle here and there. But that's why you work with really good people. Be very careful and choosy before you pick the team that's going to help you. And hopefully they're, they're well-versed in their work because they'll give you the best advice and ultimately save you money. So, by the way, my app is called Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone, plus more by Susan Miller. But just search Susan Miller and look for the app that says Astrology Zone. Everybody's using my name, but Astrology Zone they can't use because it's my federal trademark. And I have a free version, so by all means, you should have my free app, of course. And you'll get a daily horoscope plus my long uncut monthly, which is what everybody wants. Um, anyway, um, the biggest growth you're going to have, Sag, is through communication. And uh, just like Gemini may be writing a book, a screenplay, a digital book, uh, start a podcast series, something, you might be too. And there's real excitement surrounding this because when you have Saturn in a house, you're focused, you're on it, you're not distracted. And that's a sign of success. You're going to have Saturn there for three years. No, not quite, until March 2023. But that's a long time, to, a little over two years. So, you know, that's enough time to make a dent, <laughs> make a splash with what you're doing. I know some Sagittarians that are working on an app, and I know others that are working on a podcast. So it's pretty exciting. I, I love the creativity that actually the pandemic has spawned. Really, people sitting home are having time to think, which is really good. Now, the next sign is Capricorn. And if you're Capricorn and you read my December forecast, and you can still see it until the end of this month. But after the end of this month, we're going to take off December. We only keep one previous month because the search engines get all mixed up and they say, oh, read Susan's new forecast of 1999. No, <laughs> no. So I only keep one previous month. But when I was doing Capricorn, I wanted them to know that all the work they did last year was going to come to something important and that they would make a lot of money and it would be earned income. But that's a little boring just saying earned income. I wanted to make it graphic. 
So I started reading about Jupiter and Saturn, which will both be in Capricorn's money house. And then I read the BBC website that said it's raining diamonds on Jupiter and Saturn. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. It was written in 2012 on BBC's website. And in the December forecast, which you can still get, go into Capricorn on my web, go on, my, on your computer, and, and on the bottom it says previous forecast in a blue box. But actually you can do it on my app too. It just says, you know, you swipe left. And you'll see, I give the provenance of that article. And I said, you know, the scientists used to think that the conditions weren't right for carbon to form on Jupiter or Saturn. They knew it was forming on Uranus and Neptune, which is Aquarius and Pisces rulers. But they didn't think the atmosphere was right for Jupiter and Saturn, but now they know it is right. So I had to have a little footnote. Okay, full disclosure. <laughs> Tiffany and Cartier have not opened shops on Jupiter and Saturn yet. So the diamonds that will be raining down are uncut. But let's not worry about that. The image I want you to have in your mind, dear Capricorn, is that money is going to be pouring into your second house of earned income. Imagine those diamonds raining down in your second house. And it's all the work and the spade work you did last year, and you were saying to yourself, I don't know, is this going to work out? I mean, ugh, I'm putting so much work into this, and I'm not getting a lot of results yet. Oh, now you will. In, in astrology, everything runs by time. So don't, don't worry about that. You're going to be making money. Now, uh, Uranus is in your house of children and love, and creativity. And the house of money and the house of love and creativity are at odds because of Saturn and Uranus. It could mean that you're working on a creative project that's running over in estimate. And you might even have to put in your own money. Sometimes that happens. You know, if it's a project dear to you and you're going to have your name on it, you want to make it the best it can be. I know it's not fair because the client isn't giving you the money, but I've seen it many times where the artist puts the money in uh, and, and it comes as a surprise. But you'll, you'll be able to make the decision. You can say no and you could walk away from that or you could do it. Or it could be that your child needs some special lessons and uh, you see real talent. You want to give your, your little one violin lessons or piano lessons or Kwai Kondo lessons, <laughs> whatever it is, it looks like your children <laughs> may need more money than you thought this year. Or maybe, you know, with remote learning, it's so hard on parents, so hard. Some kids take to remote learning and others don't. But some parents are uh, forming little pods, groups, where they have a teacher come in and as long as the kids are always together and they're safe, um, you know, that's an option, but not everybody can do it. That's expensive. But if you're worried, if you feel your child may be falling behind, you know, maybe a limited amount of tutoring could help. I see this connection between your child and money, so I think you might do it. Also, it's the house of love now, I don't want you taking any vacations because, because that's the house of vacation. But Dr. Fauci says we're not going to travel. So you're not going to travel. We have to listen to Dr. Fauci. <laughs> My own daughter didn't come home for Thanksgiving or Christmas. She lives in L.A. I you know and she didn't come back to New York. Now, we, we follow what they say. It, if not for her, for me. You know, I want to live. <laughs> she wants to live. We all want to live. And we don't want to wind up on a ventilator. So, so we listen. Now, if you're Aquarius, Saturn is in your house of home and family. And you could be having a difficult situation with family members. And uh, 
I, I don't know exactly what it could be, or it could be a, a psycho landlord, or it could be a roommate who is very hard to ask to leave because they have squatter's rights. I know in New York, if you have someone stay with you more than a month, they have squatter's rights. You're not allowed to make them leave. I had no idea there was such a law. So be careful if you take in a roommate. I don't know what the laws are in different states, but it's worth it to find out your state or your country. But I know what they are in New York. So, you know, New York's a very kind state and I can understand it. But I had someone stay with me two years and I couldn't get her to leave for love or money. I finally found her her own apartment, a beautiful apartment overlooking the East River at a, an incredibly low price. And she said, well, and I said, well, I have 12 friends who want that apartment. If you don't want it, I'm going to give it to another friend. She said, no, no, I'll take it. And that was the only way I could kind of coax her to leave because I needed her room to have my children. She was supposed to stay here a month. She stayed two years. So that was a bit hard. And she would always cry when I'd say, do you need to the apartment? And I didn't want her to cry. So I would melt like chocolate, you know, I was like, oh, no, don't cry. But after a while, I began realizing um, I had to be a little bit tougher. And, but I found her an apartment that she loved, and she really loved it. It's on the 31st floor. I mean, my God, it was beautiful with lots of sun. So, and she could afford it. It was very low price. And it was in my neighborhood, and I never saw her again. She never calls, never comes. That says a lot, <laughs> but it's okay. We move on in life. But Aquarius, you're going to have unusual situations in your home, you know, with family members or with a landlord or with a house you're buying. So if you're buying a house, you ask a lot of questions. The law says if you're going to have to put in money and do repairs, you have to be told. I mean, that's the law. They can't hide things from you. And you need a good real estate lawyer. Um, if you're getting an inheritance, there could be unexpected problems from other family members, squabbling. Now you have Saturn um, in Aquarius, you have Jupiter in Aquarius. This is your emerald year. So you have all aces. This is your wonderful year. So I think you can rise above any problems that come up because you have Jupiter, the planet of miracles, in your sign. You only get that every 12 years. Do you know how lucky that is? Oh, my goodness. So you have it now, and you're going to have it all year until the end of the year with one exception in the end of May, from the middle of May to the end, all through June and all through July. Jupiter runs into Pisces, and that's when you're going to make a lot of money. Lots of money. That's when you want to sign your biggest contracts. And you'll, you'll negotiate really well. Now, Pisces, uh, it looks like you're going to be writing and working hard. Uh, Saturn's in Aquarius. That's in um, the behind-the-scenes sector. That's the House of Solitude. But it's also Pisces natural house, so you get inspiration from being alone. Pisces likes to be with other people, but they also need time to be alone and think. It's a very creative sign. And Uranus is in Taurus, so that's where your creativity is springing from. And Taurus gets along great with Pisces, and it's in your house of writing and speaking and appearances, which you're probably doing on Zoom. <laughs> I've never done so much Zoom in my life. I finally figured it out, and it's fun, actually. But uh, I do miss meeting people. I miss meeting you, but eventually this will all be in the past. Remember, the Spanish flu ended, and what came next? The roaring 20s and the beautiful clothes and the beautiful jazz music and the art deco and the gorgeous literature and movies and... It was a renaissance of the highest level, and I expect that to happen with us. I know that we're seeing a lot of stores close. And also, if you've lost someone, that's a hole in your heart. 
I know one close person who lost her husband. The doctor misdiagnosed him, and it was in March. It was early on when they didn't really know the symptoms too well. And that creates a hole in your heart. My mother died of natural causes in 2012, and I still have a hole in my heart. And I was really having difficulty with her death. And I said to myself, what would she tell me? And then I realized she'd say, start something new, Susan. Start something new. So I said, that's good, at least... For the time I'm involved with that new project, I'll, I'll be out of the pain. Of course, when I'm done with it, I'll feel it again. But, and what I chose is to do a lot of film. I had my TV, um, I had, my, uh, I had a, a wonderful uh, TV show that was, um, ran about three years, but we lost funding. But I learned something, something that I'll always have in my pocket. And I did films for Fresh, one of my sponsors. And I did films for other people, long movie things on set uh, with a director. And during that time, I was totally absorbed with the things I was learning. So I say to you, if you lost someone, oh, I, I feel so bad for you. And some people lost more than one person. Some people lost several members of their family. And it's so final. And it's, it's so mysterious. My mother once said to me, we're little soldiers of God. We have no idea how we got here. We have no idea where we're going. We have to have faith that there's something else after this, because life is such a learning process. We have to have faith, Susan. And she was always so optimistic. And... You know, I think of life being all these little atoms, and they say, you know, we look at our couch and our table and we think it's solid as a rock, but it's moving little atoms. So life is such a mystery. How could that be? How could things be moving? I don't get it. And how could, you know, we're spinning in space, (laughs) all the things the scientists tell us, and it's all true, and we have to believe it, but it's so mysterious. So we have to just march forward like little soldiers and give ourselves new experiences because it's good for us. It's good for everybody. And make 2021 the year of something new. And if you're young and you hate your job, then find something better that you can do. Because like Governor Carrie Cuomo, I'm sorry, as Governor Cuomo said, you don't have to go back to your old life. He said to us on TV, when I go to the office, I hear the birds singing, and that's in the spring, of course, the birds, smart little creatures, go to Florida in the winter, it's so cold here now. But, you know, he hears them singing, the sky is blue, the earth is, the crust is is getting healed, there's less pollution. I think we will all be working home. I think companies won't want to spend all that money on rent. And it's great for women because when your babysitter doesn't show up, your whole life falls apart. And if your mom can't come over, it's a catastrophe. But women working at home, there's much more elasticity. And I think you work harder at home because you don't have the distractions. And I think companies will have us come in once a week you know, or we'll have meetings, or they'll have we work type situations where they rent a beautiful space. And, you know, the whole office comes in as a team. And, and that that centrifugal force will still be there. But we're learning new skills with this pandemic. And we're wearing different clothes, and <laughs> we're eating different food, but we're eating more healthy because we're cooking. And You know, Mother Nature knew if she just gave us a pandemic for a month, nothing would change. Nothing. (laughs) We go back to our old life in a minute. But after a year, well, that's a whole different story. Yeah. 
So anyway, we're coming to the end of this broadcast. I'm dying to get your questions. And because Alana, my dear friend Alana, who I love with all my heart, has chosen to make this retreat tiny so that everybody has access to all the speakers easily. And you could ask as many questions as you want. Just try to couch them in a way that might be interesting to a lot of people. So instead of saying, my husband is a Taurus with Gemini rising and the moon in Virgo and he's out of work, when is he going to get a job? Say, when will a Virgo get a job? This person has you know, Taurus rising or whatever it is. You know, try to make it clear and simple so that other people can, you know, listen up and, and gain from your question. Some people give me so much detail. They tell me, well, I'm a Pisces, my husband's a Virgo, and I have Gemini rising, and he has Sagittarius rising. And then they finally tell me the question, and it has to do with him, so they didn't really have to tell me theirs. <laughs> So try to be as clear as possible. Okay, well, I'm going to end this, and I look forward to talking to you really soon. Thank you for joining me today. This is Susan Miller of Astrology Zone saying goodbye for now, and I'll see you very soon.